is Malit. I'm a tin typist. I'm telling you this even though it does sound a little strange because there's a chemical I'd like to talk to you about uh, which I use in the practice of tin typing. It's called potassium cyanide. Um, if you have a couple minutes to spare, please stay with me. I'll give you a brief view of potassium cyanide, um, or KCN as we like to call it. Um, a little bit of a history. I'll skip over most of the gory bits about this frankly toxic material and um, we'll end up with a suggestion, actually a little magic act, where I will show you how to transform this violent poison. This whole trip will take about four or five minutes, so if you have the time, stick with me. Thanks. Potassium cyanide, or at least hydrogen cyanide, its precursor chemical, the sort of a family of cyanides, occurs in nature, even in rural areas. It's found in particularly high concentration in the cassava root, and people who eat that plant regularly have a slightly higher level of cyanide in their bloodstream. Um, they seem none the worse for it. As far as I can tell, the beginning of potassium cyanide as, as an industrial process um, began around 1704, 1706, and it had to do with the discovery of a new chemical, Prussian blue. It was a beautiful, brilliant blue that people were very anxious for. And that's the point at which potassium cyanide really um, comes into the uh, story. Modern day potassium cyanide, despite this cute movie, isn't really made this way. As far as I can tell, it's mostly made in India. Let's listen to what Mike Jacobson, president of Artcraft, has to say about KCN production today. My name is Michael Jacobson. Um, I own Artcraft Chemicals Incorporated and I've had it since the early 90s. Can you tell me a little bit about how it's made? I've looked at the Google page, but I can't say that I can make that much sense out of the formula that I see there. Well, the way it's made today mm -hmm. is uh, acrylonitrile. Acrylonitrile is a building block for plastics. It goes into various plastics. And uh, millions of tons of acrylonitrile are produced each year. And from that production, um, one of the waste products is hydrogen cyanide. And it kind of sounds strange to say, and they want to be green. But, you know, you got to do something with the hydrogen cyanide. And uh, companies can either get rid of it as a waste product and, you know, bring it to a facility and all that other stuff and pay big money, or they can do something with it. And what they do with it is they react the hydrogen cyanide with potassium hydroxide to produce potassium cyanide. A lot of it is used for people who are far less careful than I am, particularly in gold and silver mining. So when you look at my five grams against theirs, maybe mine is like 50 or 500 mil billion times less, and yet I'm having a lot of trouble getting a hold of that chemical. I always assumed that when it went to the sewage plant that they treated for it, but in fact, it's one of those chemicals that just passes right through. It concerns me even more that our overflow during the storms is to the Gowanus Canal. I'm showing you a short walk now of how my chemicals go down into the spillway. There are actually animals that live in this canal, including the blue crab and baby perch. So it's something that I really do worry about. So here's the deal. I don't want to give up making tin types. It's part of my life. It's part of the lifestyle I've chosen. At the same time, I don't want to um, make it worse for things around me. I'm concerned about the fireflies in the backyard, uh, a number of things that try to make a living in the Gowanus, the birds that live in the pine tree in the back. So what do I do? Hey, it's the firefly. Oh my God. How do I actually neutralize the waste that I make in a way that's safe, or at least safer, for the things around me? Oddly, this didn't take a very long time to figure out. The answer was pretty easy. So now I'm going to show you a magic trick. What I'm going to do is change potassium cyanide, which here is a health level hazard on the MSDS of 3, which is bad, it's also known as a violent poison, to Potassium cyanate with a health level of one, which is an uncontrolled substance. I do not advocate eating this or drinking this, but I would say that it's a good trick to be able to easily change this toxic material into a far less toxic one. Hydrogen cyanide, 
hydrogen peroxide. You can go buy it at the drugstore. It's uh, relatively cheap. And if you just put some hydrogen peroxide in it, it makes potassium cyanate, which is a non-regulated, non-hazardous product. Um, um, it ties up the cyanide molecules so that uh, it's no longer hazardous, which, you know, just because something has cyanide in it doesn't mean it's hazardous. Uh, people hear the word chemical and they, they get kind of stupid, but, you know, people who are against chemicals uh, use them every day, every way, and they just don't realize it. Chemicals aren't bad, people just use them badly. Don't be silly, get rid of your stuff the right way.